Hello folks, I'm going to be digging into some of the latest report stats and insights coming from a new report that came out just this past week from The Verge, the technology website, and massive credit to the authors of this, including James Vincent and Jakob Kastronekis. Really interesting report looking into hope, fear, and AI. What does it mean for us in the future? And in particular, what do the average person or the average people's want from their AI tools. So let's talk a little bit about what this report is. They put this together working with the research consultancy team called The Circus, and it polls, as it says here, 2,000 US adults on their thoughts, feelings, and fears about AI. You might be like, why 2,000? Every year we publish our own reports, which is the Voice Consumer Index. We do 6,000 interviews, but as you'll see, the same number comes up again, 2,000 every market. Why 2,000? That's the number that you need for it to be statistically viable. And what I mean by that is once you poll 2,000 people, if, say, only 50% of them have actually done the thing that you want them to talk about, that's only 1,000 people. And then to do any kind of analysis on that, you still need about that kind of number. So that's why it's 2,000 people. That's pretty much the number that kind of counts for PR purposes. Let's dig into this. Now, the first thing is really to look at who is using AI. And as you can see here, they have gone into a number of different AI services to begin to have a look at the usage in these 2,000 people. And first thing you obviously want to understand is, well, have people even heard of it? Do they understand what it is? And if so, have they used it? And I think what's really interesting, but probably no surprise, is just how broad the usage and knowledge is. If you dig into what these numbers are, 57% of people have heard of ChatGPT or have used it. Now, one in three people, they say here, have tried one of these AI-powered tools when you look across, across the whole board, which is just a massive adoption considering how long these things have been publicly on the market. And certainly in less than, say, it was mid-November that ChatGPT was released to the world. So you know, you're talking about less than nine months, how quickly this has began to dominate. Now, Bing and Bing Chat, obviously, it says here 46%. That's the one that I have the most problems with, if I'm honest, when I look at these numbers, mainly because Bing itself, as you would imagine has been around for a long time so there may be some confusion there of do people know what bing is versus bing chat from microsoft but putting that to one side yeah it's still pretty high what i think is really fascinating is just how high the usage is here of and knowledge of my ai from snap which is snapchat's own ai bot that lives inside of snapchat now, obviously, Snap is a huge platform globally, more so in the US than other markets. And so as a result, it's maybe no surprise that is familiar. But I don't know about you, but I found that to be a bit of a surprising stat. I don't know if your Snapchat usage reflects that. But for me, for my money, I thought that was interesting. Let's keep going here. Now, the one that also surprised me here is, again, remembering what is it versus have heard or used of it is Google Bard. Now, obviously, in the US, Google Bard got a lot of high profile media coverage. It was mentioned on all of the kind of major morning shows when it first was released. Lots of awareness. Maybe this awareness over usage, I'm going to guess, is a lot higher, but certainly is a surprise. And then when you come into some of these AI image generation tools, so mid-journey, stable diffusion, that number drops off quite sub substantially. But the fact that 25% of people have already heard of mid-journey, to me, I think it's also just really striking how quickly technology like that has grown. Often people have seen the output of a image generation AI, but I'm surprised to see that many people actually know what a tool like Midjourney is by name. And I think that's probably the greatest surprise here overall. First up, that's the awareness. I think what's our kind of key takeaway here? I think one of the big things is we can see there is just really widespread understanding and knowledge about what these conversational and generative AI tools are. And lots of people have used them already, which is, I think, the most kind of striking thing. When you begin to think about how this compares to other technology waves in the past, it's pretty, it's pretty substantial. Okay, let's now talk a little bit about who is using it. So this is a kind of nice visual representation of who these people are. Now, considering the platforms we've just spoken about, I think it's no surprise that millennials make up the largest cohort here. But... Why is that? What's the rationale? I think some of the rationale will be that millennials in general, yeah, just making a point here that when I say they're the largest, not by a lot in comparison to the the amount of people in Gen Z, 36 million versus 34.9 extrapolation here, is that 
Uh, millennials, they make up the majority of the workforce. ChatGPT in particular has been seen as a real opportunity to disrupt the workforce in particular, and particularly those in knowledge work. So no big surprise there, that is having a real impact on millennials and they make up the, the usage there. But Gen as well, obviously Gen Z now very much in the workforce as well, and particularly Gen Z making up a massive cohort of the student population, particularly those in higher education and college age in the US. And we know from all of the headlines, don't we, that these tools have been particularly disrupting education around issues around plagiarism, around writing, but also as a great assistant for research. No big surprise there. And obviously, when you talk about AI being used in a lot of the tools that we use every day, way beyond the, the actual source, like algorithms and language models that are mentioned up here, AI is now bleeding into all of the tools that we're all using on a daily basis. So it's no surprise either that this stuff is stacking up really highly. Now, how does this look in comparison to other types of technologies that are out there and how big an impact are these things going to have? During this question, they've asked what are the attitudes of people it says here nearly three quarters of people said ai will have a large or moderate impact on society compared to 69 percent for electric vehicles and a paltry 34 percent it says here for nfts yeah the nft brigade are maybe slightly quiet at this point in time of all of these technologies artificial intelligence electric vehicles vr ar and nfts ai has the kind of the highest substantial gap now if, if for my money, I think the EV's point here, it's interesting to make the comparison, but it's slightly of a weird one to make because you're talking about a very different type of experience versus these other more technology-driven experiences. Sorry, driven experiences. That wasn't an intentional pun, but worth having a look at. AI, though, in comparison to VR, AR, I think, is probably more interesting and certainly feels like this is the wave that versus the stuff that sits in the more metaverse Web3 that people are paying most attention to. In terms of how it's being used, this is something that we have seen borne out in our own research, is that this central question here of answering a question, 68%, is actually very much the same as what we see when people use voice assistants, they use conversational assistants to get stuff done. One of the biggest things that people do is answer and ask questions. So search is a real big point here. But I think what we also see is that these two tools are being used for more just than content consumption or data retrieval, but actually as that real co-pilot right that's what the likes of the amazons the googles and particularly microsoft are talking about with this idea of these ais are going to come and help us actually get things done now when you think about the workplace this is the other big thing that people are are interested in and you can see here from this stat most people thought ai did a better job that they could have done on certain types of tasks in particular i think this is hilarious the emails is one of the biggest tasks now i'm not gonna lie i have used chat gpt to help me write an email from time to time the irony of that is that most of the emails I write, it would take me longer to write a prompt to get the AI to write the email than it would for me to go and just write the email. And I think that's probably true for most of us. But when you're crafting something complex or difficult, and certainly when putting together like larger documents like proposals or reports or analysis or things like that, these tools are way better at putting these things, or well, maybe better is the wrong word. They're certainly faster at putting this stuff together in a way that is useful. Now, when it comes to concerns, a lot of people have got concerns around copyright, not a big surprise and you can see here and certainly in the conversations we have with clients in the media space particularly in music and film and entertainment this is a consistent question that is coming up is how do we begin to use these models without the knowledge of where they got their training data and we certainly should be trying to protect the original artists or pay them and maybe paying them is a form of protection if you think of it that way. So artists need to be compensated for AI works when it copies their work and it should also, some many more people thinking that they should be compensated than the companies should be banned from doing it, which I think is an interesting perspective. It's hard to argue that any artwork hasn't got some form of kind of inspiration or copy in it originally, but certainly compensating people I think is, is a huge part. And lastly, and this is where I'll end our conversation today, is around the regulation. And so what's really high here is very high and consistent numbers in the high 70s here across all of these categories that there is broad support for different types of regulation and laws in this space so if you are looking at these 76 percent say that this space needs to be re re sorry regulated on the development of the ai 
AI models should be required to be trained on the data sets that have been fact-checked, which I think is a huge thing, particularly in thinking about the US's problem with disinformation at the moment. Not that's just a US problem, it's particularly political football there. AI-created digital content should be required to clearly state that it was created with AI, which I think is really interesting. You're beginning to see some forefronts of this with digital watermarking and calls by the ad industry in particular to call out when AI has been used in the creation of advertising. And then video and audio deepfakes should be illegal to create if it imitates the real person without that person's consent. And that's something that we've been pushing for a long time with our partners at the Open Voice Network and Veritone in particular on the creation of these things. How do we feel about this? The world feels both excited and nervous. I think there's a slight overriding anxiety over the nervous, over the excitedness, but you know, the middle ground here is the one that we should probably pay attention to. Really good report. I think I would recommend going and having a read in there. There's lots of stuff to dig into in more detail. We will be doing the same here. If you've got thoughts of your own about these stats or more, and if you've got in particular interest in what future research we should be doing here at Vixen to help you think about how you can use AI for your brand, for your business or community, then I would love your thoughts and comments in the chat below.